Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. This is great ski country out here. Folks come from far and near to try and break their necks on the dizzy slopes of the mountains around Knotty Pine. (laughs) I wouldn't recommend beginners trying to break in their skis out here. These ski runs are for experienced and quick-thinking men and women, and sometimes even they have trouble staying in one piece. Now, going down the slope isn't any problem, but getting back up is another matter. So the folks at the ski lodges have installed what they call ski lifts. They're varied in construction and design, but they all fill the same purpose, to get the skiers back up to the top of the run. Hold on to your safety belts now, because here we go with the story, Skiers in the Sky. Well, here we are at Mile High Ski Lodge. It's at the foot of a great and dangerous run that begins a mile up in the mountains. Right now, a group of athletes are gathering to go up to the top in the ski lift car. The car is enclosed and is supported by eight cables. The reason for this type of ski lift is that the car passes right over some very rugged canyon country on its way to the top. The car is pulled to the top by clamping onto a continuous power cable, like the San Francisco cable cars. Right now, the operator of the car, Red McCann, is trying to get everyone organized to make the trip. All right, all right, quiet down, folks. Quiet! Well, I do declare you don't have to shout like a wounded bull. You break my eardrums. I'm sorry, miss, but these folks have got to listen to me. Oh, we've skied before, sir. We're not novices, you know. I'm aware of that. But you haven't skied this run before. Now, listen to me carefully, everybody. Okay. Be sure and check all your gear carefully before boarding the car. It's a long way to the top, and once the car starts, we won't back up. And we can't turn around. <laughs> now, let me warn you, each and every one of you. When you get to the top of Mile High Run and you think it's going to be too much for you, don't take a chance. Right back down in the car. Huh. Well, a lot of top skiers have sweat blood on this run. It's wicked. It's a real challenge. But don't be a fool. We won't think you're a coward for turning back. In fact, we'll congratulate you for having common sense. Now, if you checked your gear, then you can board the car. Okay. Be sure you have all your equipment. How do we know this car is safe? We have to cross Dead Man's Gorge, don't we? Well, miss, there are eight cables suspended in the car. Their strength is tested at eight times the maximum weight of a fully loaded car. It'll swing in the wind, but it won't fall. All right, time to go. Leave in five minutes. We might as well introduce ourselves as long as we're going to ride to the top together, Miss... uh... Kennedy, Grace Kennedy. I'm Calvin Moore. If I close my eyes, I'm not asleep. I can't ride in airplanes because I get dizzy from the height. Well, it seems to me that you all should have stayed at the lodge. This kiddie car makes you that way. Oh, no. I told my dad I was going to ski the Mile High Run, and that's what I intend to do. Oh, the car swaying. Well, that's what Red said it'd do. Do you know the operator? Of course not, silly. Everyone calls him Red. Hey, hey, what's that? we're what's stopping. That? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Now we're going backwards. Now oh, sit down, sit down and be quiet. All right, 
right, you're safe. Our cables snap, but I've set the brakes. The brakes will hold the car. What if they don't hold? We'll all be killed. We're stuck over Dead Man's Gorge. The ski lift car is stuck over Dead Man's Gorge. What? Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I saw it with my own eyes. No, no, now take it easy, folks. I'll go out and find out what's wrong. It might be only a temporary power failure. That isn't a power failure, Mr. Jackson. The cable's broken. Great, Scott, you're right. But this never happened before. What are you going to do to get that car down? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is get help. Who? Rangers. Oh, boy. It's a mess this time. You're not joking, pal. There's liable to be some dead people this time, and I don't mean maybe. Here. Let me open this garage door. That's it. Yeah. Now, never mind the car, Henry. Gray Wolf, Stubby, you fellas drive the other rescue truck. Henry and I'll take this one. All right, let's go. Don't spare the horsepower. Watch out for patches of ice on curves. I've got my old eagle eye glued to the road. Hey, how come we didn't take the car? I figured we'd make better time. Well, perhaps you're right, but we're going to need all the equipment we can get our hands on. Hey, that was quick thinking. I never thought of that. I don't know what equipment we might need, but we got a whole truck full. Uh, two trucks full. Two trucks on the spot is better than two in the garage back home. All right. Hey, Bill. Yeah, pal? How could that lift car get stuck out in the middle of nowhere? That's what we're going to find out. Why don't you do something, Red? You stand around looking pretty. What do you expect me to do, fly down there like a bird and get help? Well, at least you could try something instead of standing around like a pig in a poke. I'll get help. I'll figure out some way to get out of here. You can't make me die in this car. Come on, fellas. Let's get on top of the car and start yelling, waving our arms. Sit down, all of you. I said quiet. And that's what it's going to be. The first guy that steps out of line is going to get this wrench laid right alongside his head. You can't talk to us that way, you big ape. We are civilized people. You've got a lot of nerve threatening us like that. What do you figure you're going to do by beating us on the head? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to be... Quiet. That's right. right. That's better. Don't take the yakking at me like that again, miss. Or I'll put you on the roof. You and your charming friend are stirring up panic in this car, and I won't have it. I'm giving you fair warning, all of you. The first one of you men to start a panic gets this wrench right in the head. There'll be no panic. It's the only way we're going to get out of here alive. Now, if you look back at the lodge, you'll notice that there's quite a lot of people down there. They know we're in trouble. And help will get here just as soon as they figure out the best way to do it and keep us alive. Gray Wolf, Stumpy, get those people back. There's so much noise, I can't even hear myself think. Henry, call the sheriff and have him send men up here to keep this crowd under control and out of the way. Well, I, I don't know what to do. How can we get those poor people out of there? Oh, oh, this is a terrible thing. Why, they might all get killed. Mr. Jackson, this is the time to use your head for something more than a hat rack. Panic and fear will accomplish nothing. Mine add to the problem. I'm sorry, but what do you want me to do? Right now, give me some information. That's what you wish. I figure the car is being held in a 45-degree angle. Yeah, 43 to be exact. How long will the brakes hold the car up there? An hour, two hours, five hours, who knows? Is there heat in the car? Yeah, the heat's manufactured by a small gas engine. How long will the gas hold out? Well, not more than two hours. How many people in the car? 
31, including the operator. The sheriff's on his way with his men. Oh, that's fine, Henry. Uh, Mr. Jackson, is there any place close by that a helicopter can land? Yeah, there's a large clearing out back of the lodge. Henry, call for a small copter while I check the clearing. Right. Well, what you gonna do with the copter? I'm going to get aboard the lift car. In me there. How else, Mr. Jackson? Don't they stop looking at us and do something? For land's sakes, what are they going to do? Cheer or watch us go to our deaths? Why don't we do something? All we do is sit around and wait. Wait for death. Well, I'm going to do something about this and nobody's going to stop me. Sit down and keep quiet. You make me. You just make me. I'm not afraid of you and that wrench. I'm going to get out on the roof and yell for help. That's what I'm going to do, and don't try and stop me. You uh, asked for it, Mr. And now you're going to get away. Get away from me. Get away from me. Look at it. You killed him, Calvin. You killed him. Now see what you've done. I didn't. He slipped and struck his head. He slipped. Do you hear? I didn't kill him. You believe me, don't you? He isn't dead, miss. Just knocked out, but good. Well, mister, you certainly fixed things up fine. Now we don't have anyone who knows how to operate this car. A plenty tight fit inside this small helicopter. <laughs> don't breathe hard, you push me out the door. <laughs> <laughs> That's no joke either, fellas. Uh, Martin, how close do you think you can come to the car? Well, my, my first answer is not very. When I think about those folks down there stranded like penguins on an ice fo- floe, I'll say I'll get as close as I can. Mm-hmm. A good thing, door on Lee's side, so copter not have to fight wind, so it not be blown into sight of lift. Yeah, I'll say. They got enough problems without fighting the wind. Well, here goes, fellas. We'll make a dry run first, and you can see for yourself how close I can get. I'll be fine, Martin. If the copter vibrates a lot, don't think it's falling apart. I'm going to have to rev it up for better stability. Here we go. How's it look? Fine. I'll take the copter straight up. Okay. Call her when. Whoa! Well, I should be able to swing into the car door by using the cable. You can hold the copter right here. I can hold it. Wonderful. Now circle around while I get into the harness, and we'll try out my little stunt. You ready for me to snap harness shut? Yes. You ready now? Don't forget walkie-talkie. Right. I left that here. I'd have the wigwag. You better get a portable radio set up to swing in on the cable in case the walkie-talkie conks out. I'll be out of business without communications. Uh, I'm due as soon as Copter land at large. You ready now, Bill? Just about. Give me plenty of slack cable after I swing in through the door so I won't be jerked out of the car if Martin can't hold the copter. Ah, uh, that's a good idea. I watch cables slack plenty close. Are you ready, Bill? Yeah. Let's maneuver into position and try it. Land sakes, what do they think they can do with that helicopter? They can't land on the roof of the car. Maybe they came out to look and laugh. Oh, don't talk foolish. They're up to something. Here they come again. There's a man hanging under that machine. He let go. No, no, he didn't. He's been lowered on a cable. What good's that going to do? He's going to try and get on a car. I believe you're right. The door, Calvin. Open the door. They're swinging him like a pendulum. Here he comes. Here, grab a hold of me till I can disconnect this cable. Sure, Ranger. Sure. There we are. Okay, the cable's free. 
Well, howdy, folks. My name's Bill Jefferson, not Buck Rogers. <laughs> and what's the matter with Red? Oh, that man's responsible. They had a fight, and Red slipped, and he struck his head. Well, I'll fix Red up, and we'll see about getting you folks out of here safely. Why not get us out first and then take care of Red? Because, my selfish friend, the man's hurt, that's why. Bill up there, all right. Sure looked like a spider swinging back and forth up there. Yeah, I'll say he did. Why well, didn't breathe while he was making like a trapeze? He ain't been inside the car now about five minutes. He ain't said a word. Maybe he smashed walkie-talkie getting into car. Well, that's possible, all right. How are we going to know? Well, he'll give the young whippersnapper another five minutes and then send Martin and Gray Wolf back up there to... Swing in the portable radio. Well, uh, do you think you can get those people out of there the same way he got in? I wouldn't be surprised. That's about what he's figured on doing, Mr. Jackson. Yeah, but it'll take a long time with just one copter. <laughs> if that's what he's going to do, we'll have them flying whirly birds humming around that car like bees around a hive. How do you feel, Red? Uh, uh, my, my head aches a little, but otherwise I'm okay. Must have had a rough time up here. Hell, panic. Watch out for the girl and man in the front seat. They're panic makers. Okay. I've got to radio the lodge. Or they'll think something's happened to my radio. Bill to Grey Wolf. Bill to Grey Wolf. Over. Grey Wolf to Bill. We can let you call. Well, Red got his head bashed in a little. I took time to fix it. Uh, hurt bad? No, he's all right. Now, here's the plan. Get half a dozen helicopters like Martin's and have them come in one at a time. We'll have to have some harnesses to put on these people beforehand. You can start any time you're ready. Over. Martin, start right away. We get other copters up here as soon as possible. Over and out. Good work. And out. Sounds good, Bill. I'll stay with the car until all the passengers are out. Okay, Red. Now, let me have your attention, please. You folks will be taken off the car the same way I came in. One at a time. Isn't it pretty risky, mister? No, it's scary, but not risky. I've been on the swinging end of a helicopter cable dozens of times and lived to tell the tale. Yeah, they said the cables in the lift car wouldn't break, but one did. You're still alive, aren't you? That's telling them, Ranger. I'll go first, just to show everyone it can be done. Thank you, sir. In a short time, we'll be taking you out of here as quickly as the helicopters can make it to the ground and back. In the meantime, just relax. Feels pretty good, Ranger. Ah, you don't want it too tight. Just comfortable. All right, relax now. Because the harness will do all the work of keeping you safe. <laughs> when I did the parachute drop at the fairgrounds last year, I sure didn't think I was practicing for something like this. I'll wave my handkerchief now, and you're off. Well, good luck to the rest of you. Yeah. Well, this is it. Here I go. How are things up there, Bill? Just fine. How are they with you? Oh, we've got a lot of happy relatives and relief passengers down here. That's fine. When are you coming down? After everyone else is down. Oh, well, I sure feel good. This rescue's going like clockwork. What are you going to do about the car? That, my dear fellow, is Mr. Jackson's worry. Our job is over when I come down. How many of you are left up there? Four passengers, Red and myself. Say... Tell the boys to step on it. There's a strong wind coming up. It'll make rescue difficult, if not impossible, very shortly. Oh, no, I'm not so happy. I'll pass the word right away, Bill. Over and out. Bill, we can't get close.
close to the car anymore. It's too dangerous. We'll have to wait until the wind quiets down. Hey, the brakes are slipping. I can feel a car moving. Huh? All right, Bill. What's more, there's a fine snow stock now. That gets under the brakes. She was wearing for a nasty bobsled ride. What's going on up there? Martin, put Grey Wolf on. Red, can you tighten the brake lever anymore? Oh, well, yeah, I'll try. There's one more notch to go. Bill, what's wrong up there? The brakes are slipping. We're going to be killed. Do something before we're killed. Sit down, Calvin, and keep quiet. We've got enough trouble without you acting up. Hey, they're holding again. I got the handle up to the last notch. Good work, Red. Uh, Grey Wolf. Uh, what do we do now? How many feet of heavy hawser line are there on the trucks? Uh, I say 400 feet. What you have in mind, Bill? 400 feet isn't enough. You have to get another 200 feet of rope somewhere. Say, I know what you can do. Double up some of the lighter rope on the trucks. You'll have all you need. Okay. And what do we do with it? Ask Martin to get a helper. Have them take the rope to the bottom of the gorge. Then have him fasten one end of it to the bottom of the copter. And lift that end up to us. We'll be ready to grab it as it swings in next to the car. Okay, Bill. I go with you and we try to swing rope close to car so you can grab it. Fine. While you're doing that, have Stumpy and Henry get all the men they can down in the gorge. Won't be hard to get down from the lodge. After you drop the rope to us, we'll tie it securely to the car somehow. Have Henry take the other walkie-talkie with him so I can talk to them on the gorge floor. I want the man to hold on to the rope and act as an anchor for the car. We'll try to ease the car down to the lower tower by intermittently releasing the brake. They'll hold the rope and keep us from slipping too fast. Do you understand what I'm up to? Over and out. Ah, uh, we get going right away. No telling how long brakes hold before they slip again. Out. Well, fellas... We can do some more sitting and waiting. There we got all the men we can get, Mr. Jackson. Yeah, I believe so. With the sheriff's men, I'd say there's about uh, 30. Oh, that ought to do it, don't you think, Stumpy? Yep, I sure do. And we'll turn the spotlights on the trucks down into the gorge. So we can see what we're doing. We'll need all the flash and hand lights we can get a hold of for lights to see our own way down. Oh, we've got all of them that we can find, beg, or borrow. Good. Well, there's no sense waiting around up here. Let's get going. Uh, I hope this works. Bill and Red got everyone out with themselves and one passenger. Uh, I hope they make it all right. I don't care about the car, but I just want to save them men. Well, Well, we're walking down into the gorge. We can all do some praying. If I get out of this alive, I'll, I'll never lift a foot off the ground again. Why don't they do something to get us out of here? I don't want to die. They can't let me die. Calvin, if you're so worried about dying, why did you wait until the last to leave the car? Why didn't you go first? Uh, I'm afraid to swing out in the air like the others did. I can't stand high places. I was afraid I'd faint. I was scared, do you hear? I was scared. Yeah, I hear. The others were scared, too. However, they took their courage by the bootstraps and made it. Scared or not. Oh, he's just plain yellow. A jellyfish. Easy with your words, Red. Calvin, I can tell you what you're afraid of. How? What am I afraid of? How can you tell? You a psychiatrist or something like that? I'm not a mental doctor or a mind reader. But I'm a Christian. And I've seen people like you before. What's that got to do with me? You're scared because you're afraid of God. I am not. I think someone's talked to you about accepting the Lord as your Savior. And you refused. And the Holy Spirit has been dealing with you about your rejection. You're full of hot air. Bill, the copter's coming in overhead. Okay, Red. Calvin, I think you'll take a different outlook on life if you stop fighting the Lord and accept him. I know you'll lose your terrible fear of dying. I'd do some praying if I were you. Now let's slide the windows of the car open so we can grab the rope.
Got it. Let's drag it inside and get it tied down quickly. Are you ready up there, Bill? Yes, pal, we are. How do you want us to do this? Like a tug of war. Well, he don't pull back. Just drag along. Okay, but what if the brakes don't hold on that snowy cable? Then you'll have to snag the rope as you go. Take a turn around a large boulder and let the man get a new position and release the rope and snag it again farther on. Gotcha. We're ready when you are. Okay. We'll start releasing the brakes in two minutes. Calvin, you keep a lookout below and see if you can tell us when we're getting close to the tower. All right. Red, you and I will work the brake lever together. Okay. I don't want to release the brakes all the way. Just enough to move the car. Right. Okay, let's do it now. Whoa! Let's give the boys on the ground time to reorganize. Can you see the tower? Uh, I, I can just make it out. we got about a hundred feet to go. Hey, the brakes are out! Oh, no! It's up to the boys on the ground now. Grab all the zoning and hang on in case we crash! Hey, what's hey, what's hey, 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 hey the car's not stopping! The brakes are shot! Give it all you got, boys! we got to hold that car! It can't be much farther! Drag it! Hold on, fellas. Can't be much farther now. There's the tower. Here it comes. We made it. We're still alive. We made it. Bill, the passengers have asked me to tell you how grateful they are for what you and your rangers and the sheriff's men and all the rest who helped have done. Thanks, Red. Our reward is in seeing the joy in everyone's face. <laughs> Even Calvin here looks happy and peaceful. I am. Bill, could I speak with you? Sure, Calvin. Excuse us, Red. How do you know I was fighting with the Lord? Well, that's a long story, Calvin. But I knew that someone needed to be rescued two times from danger. Two times? All of us in the car needed to be rescued from a nasty drop into the canyon. And you needed to be rescued by the Lord from a life of selfishness and sin. It's up to you, Calvin. You can be rescued if you want to. Jesus Christ has made contact with men. He's a link, a cable between us and God. Calvin, you have the choice of receiving him and being rescued from the danger of sin or being stranded forever. Well, we'll see you next week for more adventure with... Ray!